But can we just have like one quick moment to talk about like your guys' solo interviews and how much they changed my goddamn life? They were great <laughs> interviews. Oh my gosh. Like, Thank I, you. I've watched the Dax one like two times at least now. And I just I, I <laughs> get all the clips that keep getting shared about it. Yeah. And man, like that one, that was hard for me to get through. Like just because I'm a big emotional baby these days, like I'm going, I don't know. I just get emotional thinking about all these things and I can see like how bad it was for him and how much he's had to fight to get through it. Oh God, it's beautiful, dude, though. Oh, it's, thanks, dude. It's, it's, you know what I find right really now. crazy is like, like knowing you guys and, you know, being able to spend time together, but like really getting into like that other level of like knowing a person. I just like after both of your guys interviews, I just thought about you guys for like a week after the interview. I was just like, I wonder what they're like doing right now. Like, I just <laughs> thought about you guys so much. So thank you for that. Thank yeah, you. It was, yeah, it was awesome. Um, and like, <laughs> I don't know, I was just telling my story, you know, and same with Dan, we listened to, to Dan's on the way to, um, on the way to my family's hometown in the car. And like that, you know, that one was, I, I knew, you know, he, he knows my whole story and I knew his whole story, but still it was very emotional to, to listen to it on the way. But like, <clears throat> um, you know, I was just telling my story and I didn't think anything of it. You know, I didn't think like, Oh, I'm breaking barriers or, you know, or, or going to change any lives. I just wanted to tell you my story. Yeah. And, um, you know, man, all the, uh, feedback from it and the people that, uh, would that, like, I got so many texts from people that were, that worked with us or are working with us. Uh, I got so many tweets about how that helped them understand they're not alone. Um, and that's, that, that's, that was the best thing ever. Yeah. Um, I was the same. I so mean, I just like, blown up on like Twitter, Instagram, like from people that we actually know, uh, in real life to like, uh, I mean, not that that's not real life, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, friends, coworkers, whatnot of, uh, of people that, that could really relate to that. So anyways, it's just, it's really cool to be able to have conversations like that. And I appreciate you guys having been so like open and honest and like really peeled back that layer. And now I get to have you guys back on and now we just get to do like some FTR. Like now we get to have some fun, have a little hangout, talk a little oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Let's, Let's go. Talk some shit. Um, okay. Mm. So oh. dude, uh, last time I talked, last time I apparently talked shit, I got in a lot of trouble <laughs> from the, uh, from the internet fans, the Shawn Michaels fans. So let's be careful. <laughs> let's like, wow. People really get up in arms, huh? Dude, I didn't even say anything bad about the guy. You know, I, I just know. told the truth. I told the story and like I, I, you know, you and I were talking the next, I don't know, maybe three or four days later. And I, I was getting texts from random numbers and uh, like fake numbers telling me that, you know, th they were threatening me or say, calling me a cry baby and things like that. It was so crazy, but That's I never nuts. said, yeah, no, I never said a bad thing about him. I just, all I said was this thing happened and I oh. hope we can reconcile. That was it. And, and man, I got in a lot of shit for that. How creepy people, is it people, when people just get your phone number like that, huh? How I know. that happen? Yeah. It's crazy how opinionated somebody gets over your experiences. Like, right? Like it's just giving a personal account of how something happened can get so much anger and hatred from somebody in response that has no other relationship to the situation other than they read your account of it. Like that's yeah. why. Yeah, it's, it's pretty – I mean, I guess it just kind of boils down – to people's fandom of anybody. And if you're a huge fan of somebody, and obviously Shawn Michaels has such a massive fan base, he was the wrestler for so many people. So if people feel like maybe that uh, isn't shown in the light in which they imagine that the situation could have been, or maybe it's, you know, the wrong side of the story or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's really crazy how people can like kind of attach themselves to things like that. Have you, well, I mean, I guess you guys will be in conversations like that. I mean, damn, looking at what, you know, you guys go to bat for tag team wrestling all the time of being the best tag team in the world. You guys must get it both on like both sides a lot, right? If people that are massive fans or people that are like, no, you guys aren't like, what is that experience like for you guys? Yeah, uh, dude, I, I think that I, I don't mean this is a pat on the back for us, but I think we are probably the most polarizing tag team in the world because there are either people um, that love us and love our style um, and, and, and get us and understand us. And then there's a section of and there's, 
you know, or you don't. And that's okay either way. Um, that's, that's fine either way. I feel like now more people are starting to come around, which is awesome because I think we've opened up to them and we're allowing them to, to come in and, and, and enjoy us. But, uh, you know, for so long, it was either you're on the, you're on the side of they're slow and boring or you're on the side of uh, they're intense and they make the most out of what they do. Um, and there was no real in between. There's one that says, oh, they're all right. It was right. one of the two. It's yeah. interesting because it feels like it's like this slow burn almost for you guys, where you guys have just stayed the course doing your thing and people just jump on board. Uh, you know, people realizing, like you said, of like what your style is, whether they're, they're on or they're off, but it, does it feel like it's that kind of slow burn for you guys of just sticking to what you do? Have you guys had conversations about that? I guess just over the duration of you guys being a tag team of kind of having those ups and downs, like feeling like, Oh shit, do we need to change our style? Are we just going to continue doing what we want to do? What have those conversations been like between the two of you? Yeah. Like, like that said, we're, we're very polarizing. I feel like as a team and it's because we're very outspoken and we're very passionate about it. And we're not shy about how we feel. Um, and it also came, it's twofold for us. I feel like, because we also take great pride in doing our jobs really well. So when we're the bad guys, I don't care to rub people the wrong way on social media. I don't care to be the asshole. I don't care for any of that. Like the more I get people to dislike me and have less redeeming qualities, the better I'm doing my job. And the more I can blur the lines nowadays between what's real and what isn't because the curtain's been pulled back so much, mm -hmm. I like when people aren't sure. So I take a lot of pride in that. So for one, we're doing our job and we're trying to do it to the best of our abilities. But two, we're also just very real about what we are and what we feel. And I think now we, like you said, we stuck by our message for so long, what we wanted to do, what our vision for tag team wrestling was, and that we wanted to spearhead that. Like we're kind of getting to paint that picture now and people are seeing it come together with the things we've been doing with the Young Bucks match and the Ring of Honor match with the Briscoes and the Triple A stuff and wrestling rock and roll and like setting up matches that for us, are things that we want to check off yeah people are seeing like oh they're these these are buzzwordy these are things that like are getting some attention even if it's just because fans didn't realize that it was going to be possible and now we get to make those things possible and so for those i think that's why it's so rewarding for us but we do get a lot of like either people love us or people hate us and like you said people are coming around more now because we've been more open and we're being you know a little less open to rubbing people the wrong way <laughs> they were we're not as divisive as we used, as we used to be because we don't like we don't want to shove that away anymore we don't want to shut that off and try to stop it like i encourage it now because it's fun and like it's real and it just kind of happened and i think a lot of it happened with your podcast like people got to see us open up and be vulnerable real human beings with the things that we do, deal with on a daily basis so i think that was a huge part of it 